Hello, everybody. Welcome to a special breaking news episode of the Buckeye Weekly Podcast. I am Tom Orr, joined by Kevin Noon and not Tony Gerdeman this time. And because it is breaking news, we're not we're just going to dispense with the power pause. Kevin, Ohio State has added a 23, 2024 defensive end to the recruiting class just before National Signing Day. Dominic Kirks, he is now a Buckeye, committed to Ohio State, but he had kind of an unusual path to becoming a Buckeye because a month ago it did not look like this is where this was all headed. No, it, it didn't look like it was going to go in that direction. He was somebody that Ohio State had been keeping an eye on. Ohio State brought him in, you know, to visit for a game, but it just they just never were really able to get across the finish line with the with the Painesville, Ohio product. So Washington ends up losing its head coach. He decommits from Washington and commits to Ohio State. But quite honestly, even if Kalen DeBoer doesn't leave, I think that Ohio State, by virtue of being able to delay him from being a December signee to being a February signee, interjected itself more than enough that they were going to flip him regardless of uh, what was going on there. But it just makes it all the smoother. And, uh, you know, this is a a big get, and I think that there's still going to be a little debate over what which position he plays. And sometimes you bring a kid in, and you're like, "Well, we'll see what you grow into." Yeah, and we will see what he grows into. This was this was an interesting recruitment because you know sometimes they, there's an in-state prospect, and Ohio State just feels like they're sort of you know keeping him warm on the side burner, and and it's just you know that this is a guy who might not be good enough to play at Ohio State, and you know just just in case. This is one that you talk to people who know what they're talking about and kind of said, I don't know what they're waiting for. I don't know why this is why they're not making more of a push for him because he is good enough to play at Ohio State right now. And defensive end is a position where they have missed. They missed on three guys last year and Edric Houston went down to the wire this year. So this is a spot where, you know, assuming he does end up an end, that's a spot where they needed bodies. They needed capable bodies. He is more than capable of playing it at the Ohio State level from, you know, again, what I've heard from a lot of people who sort of know what they're talking about. It was interesting that that this sort of dragged on as long as it did, because it seemed like as soon as they made a push right before early signing day, boom, he didn't sign with Washington. And then the recruitment went into January. And as soon as that happened, as you said, it felt like this was where this was going to end. But it seems to me that he might be sort of representative of the kind of guy that they need to make a little bit of an earlier push on. We've talked about that a little bit at the running back position where they'll sometimes chase the national guys and, uh, you know, an Ohio state caliber player who is, you know, in Ohio or very close to it, you know, maybe gets shoved off to the side for a little bit longer than they need to be. I think he, Dominic Kirks might be sort of a model of the type of player they need to try and get into the class earlier in the future. Yeah, and I think part of it goes down to Ohio State's national pursuits, pursuing, you know, Dylan Stewart and Marquise Lightfoot and all these other guys and having, you know, being in until they're not in and, well, we're not going to give up. And sometimes you can't see the forest for the trees and you've got the guy that really is probably the right guy for you in state and you don't move quickly enough on him. So, you know, I understand that, you know, our. Our own Mark Givler was a big uh, proponent of uh, Dom Kirk's being a Buckeye and even said, while you were still pursuing all these national names, you still pursue Dominic Kirk's at that point. You still get him in the fold because, you know, that one probably is not going to flip on you. And he's, as you said, more than more than talented enough to, to play at this level. So why not do it? But. Strange things happen on the Cruton Trail, and I can't always rationalize what, when, why, how, any of that, because it just, you know, it's, it's Cruton. It, it is Cruton and uh, recruiting of all the things that uh, have changed in college football. Some of the specifics around recruiting have changed, but the overall trend of recruiting being absolutely undefeated in terms of unpredictability that has remained exactly the same over the last few years. Now you look at some of the, some of the big picture stuff with the defense. Ryan Day has talked about the fact that they want to have, eight defensive ends, eight defensive tackles on the roster. That's what they feel is sort of a fully stocked cupboard. And it's remarkable. I'm just, we're going to have this conversation as if he's a defensive end. 
you could slide him into the defensive tackle conversation just as easily and have very much the same conversation. If you look at where this team was a month ago, so let's let's say it's you know, mid-December. Edric Houston was sort of wavering on his commitment, it seemed like. They did not have Kirks. They were not really pursuing Kirks at that point. JT Tui Moloau, Jack Sawyer were both potentially going to be off to the NFL draft. That was that was a position group where they were in dire straits, potentially. You know, they, they could have gotten to mid-January and been in all the red sirens and the lights are flashing and the, and the alarm is going off and it's, it's a big, big problem. Now, JT Tui Moloau, Jack Sawyer back. Aiden Curry, King out of Jackson back, Andrew Houston back, Mitchell Melton, Josh Mickens, now Dom Kirks. I mean, this is a position group where they went from potentially a really potential looming disaster to fully stocked room with a ton of talent. Right. They do have a ton of talent. I mean, it is a fully stocked room. I mean, the concern is what does 25 look like? You know that there's not going to be a, J, uh, a Jack Sawyer or a JT Tuomolo decision at that point to to bail you out. But I think it's very important for 24 that they have pretty much a, a, a full complement of weapons at, at the position, whether or not it's end or whether or not it's tackle without us having to go through. But that room looks like there's plenty of offseason to go through all of that. But I, I think it, it's, 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 it's huge. And the thing with... Uh, with Dominic Kirks is you know that he's a guy that you're going to have if if you want him and if he works out three to four years. This isn't a one year rental through the portal of where you're sitting there and it's like now we're going to have to replace three urgently at that point. So I mean I think it has just as much long term effect as it does immediate because let's be honest, it's going to be difficult for a true freshman. I think uh, not named Edric Houston to really you know, work his way right into that too deep uh, off the bat. So, um, and, and Edric Houston may have his hands full with, as you'd mentioned, with Kenyatta Jackson and with uh, Hayden Curry. How does he get there? But it's, you know, this is a big get and it's really easy to to, to underplay it because it's happening here in mid-January and Ohio State doesn't sign anybody for the February signing period. But this is this is an important one. I think this is one, though, that would have still been underreported even if it would have happened in August, just because he's an in-state guy. And, oh, yawn, another Ohio player. Yeah, but those Ohio players have typically worked out reasonably well for Ohio State. And if you look at, you know, a lot of the conversation around the Ohio State-Michigan game the last few years has been that Ohio State has not had enough Ohio guys and enough people who grew up with the rivalry. So this is someone who has grown up with the rivalry. And just real quick, just we'll just sort of play this out in case – if they move Kirks to defensive tackles, like a three tech spot where they stand in terms of the interior defensive line, it's kind of the same story there where you've got, you brought back Ty Hamilton, Tyleek Williams, both of whom could have headed to the NFL draft. So now you have those two guys sort of at the front of the line. You got Taiwan Malone, who's now back for his second season in Columbus and presumably can be ready to play a bigger role. Hero Canoe seems like he's sort of on the verge of stepping up and playing a bigger role. Aiden McDonald really came on during the course of last season. Jason Moore was very highly talented, you know, highly touted, very talented guy coming out of high school and then was just banged up his freshman year. Will Smith is in there. You got Eric Mensa coming in this year, and then you could potentially put Kirks in there. So this is these are two position groups that just again, it it feels like it's sort of the same story on the interior. You felt like, boy. They could be pretty thin if things broke a certain way with the draft and with recruiting and all that, and they things have broken just just fine for them. Yeah, again, another another position of where the long term impact is is very meaningful with with the class having you know two guys that are in their final season, just like defensive end and everything else there, and you have a young guy, and you just have to wonder too because. You know that he would be a three. This is not a player that you're looking at. It's like, are we are we deciding between a three and a one tech like Caden McDonald? No, this is you know he is a a true. He would be a true three. So it's I think it's it's very important for the competition in the room to bring in a guy like this that certainly has a lot of potential. Again, I think it's going to probably take him a year to really kind of get into the mix, but. 
we talk, just talked about on a show recently that Ohio State has to have an assistant of some sort who monitors who's playing and who's not playing, and anybody that has lost their black stripe and is practicing well, they need to figure out a way to get them as much action as possible so Ohio State is not sitting again in one of those weird situations of where it does not have any returning depth on on, on its on its roster. So, and it's I think it's a little bit easier on defense than offense because on defense you're going to go up and run your defense. On offense you're going to run student body left, student body right. So uh, yeah, I think you know I'm I I think that this is pivotal either way, whether he's outside or inside. Well, wherever he ends up, he is going to be doing it at Ohio State. So Dominic Kirks commits to the Ohio State class of 2024. We'll sign on National Signing Day, just coming up on the first Wednesday of February. Another nice, another very nice, solid piece for the Ohio State recruiting class. Another piece of good news for the Buckeyes. You know what is turning out to be a pretty, pretty solid January, all things considered, for Ohio State. So I'm sure we'll be back with new, new, new information, new news coming up soon. There, I'm sure there'll be plenty more to talk about. Uh, a great place to talk about that would be with us at BuckeyeHuddle.com. Kevin and Tony and I covering the team. Mark covering recruiting. All of our fine team of X's and O's gurus making you a smarter football fan. All at BuckeyeHuddle.com. That will do it for today. Thank you guys for joining us. Have a great day. We'll see you next time.